it appears as though Ohio struck again. So what better way to spend my day than to tell you guys the story about another car that I once had. Let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this installment of My Vehicle Vlogs. And today we are going to talk about yet another car that was once in the family. And we actually had it uh, for a long time, uh, about 10 years, a little over 10 years actually. And uh, yeah, we just recently gave it up uh, a couple years ago. So um, let me get started. I don't have any real good footage of the Alero itself other than the video that I filmed um, probably not too long before uh, we decided to get rid of it so I knew the day was gonna be coming up when the Alero was finally going to be gone uh, so I did make a video kind of giving uh, just a brief history on the Alero and a tour and whatnot um, just to kinda remember it by um, so that's really the only footage. I have a couple of videos from when we first got the Alero, and uh, I don't know, there's not really much else that I have uh, other than those footage footages there. So I had the Bonneville, the 92 Bonneville, which I talked about in my last vehicle, um, one of my last vehicle vlogs, personal vehicles. And, uh, uh, you know, at that point, uh, in the summer of, uh, or yeah, it was early summer of 2005, I ended up blowing a brake line on this car and didn't know anybody at the time who could actually replace it. Uh, I had somebody look at it and they said that it was in a spot where it really wasn't, uh, you know, accessible. The whole line would probably have to be replaced. And at the time, didn't really know anybody who was up for that challenge and I didn't have the money to actually take it somewhere to get done. So um, I quit driving it and uh, a friend of mine, um, her, her mother had a car that uh, she wasn't driving so they lent me the car for like a month while I was uh, kind of at a crossroads either you know put more money into the Bonneville or should we just get rid of it and get something else. And the ultimate decision eventually became getting something else. So I started looking for another car and uh, I think I had looked at a few at this point. Huh. So I started looking at a couple of other cars. Um, I don't really remember all of the cars that I looked at in this time period. I know that the one car that I looked at um, it was a 99 Kia Sportage and it was green and uh, I just liked it because it was a mini you know it was a miniature SUV basically um, for it being a 99 and, and this being 2005 at this point uh, it actually was pretty clean uh, it was really good shape and I did enjoy driving it I thought for sure I had made my mind up on getting this Sportage I was wrong <laughs> I found this car the Sportage at this little uh, mechanic shop uh, in town and he sells um, cars from like auctions and such. He had the Sportage lined up there and uh, you know they let me drive it and I took it out and I liked it so I brought it back and I had to wait for the actual owner of this place to come by because you know wanted to really talk about the price and stuff like that. You know it was kinda hot outside and it was actually a really hot day and I remember just kinda of pacing you know the lot um, my one um, my cousin's husband was with me and you know we were just kinda of hanging out and so I started looking at a couple of these other cars he had lined up and in this lineup of cars was this 1999 Oldsmobile Alero and I was looking at this Alero this Silver Mist Metallic Alero with the neutral color scheme on the inside 
Uh, it was a really clean car, and there really weren't any defects on the outside uh, that I noticed. There was a little bit of paint coming off on the front bumper uh, right underneath the driver's side uh, headlight, uh, but that really wasn't bad for me <laughs> at the time. I didn't really care about that. Uh, so the car was unlocked and I opened up the car and I got inside of the car and um, I was kind of looking around. It felt comfortable. Um, it had an AM FM cassette player, optional power seat. It had the optional leather wrapped steering wheel. And overall, I just I liked sitting in this car. I liked the position because it reminded me a lot of the Grand Am. And I think that's where the chord had really struck in me, as you guys probably know by now, how much I loved the Grand Am growing up. Uh, the Alero was just more so of like, uh, it was the Grand Am's counterpart. And I just, being in the Alero reminded me of the Grand Am in many ways. So the keys were in this Alero, <laughs> and um, I started it up. Right away, I knew it had the V6, just from the sound of it. It had the, the, the 3.4 liter V6, so I knew that this was going to be, you know, already kind of like a fun car <laughs> to drive. Uh, but more importantly, because it was hot outside, uh, I basically just really wanted to... to get some air conditioning on so this car had working air conditioning uh, so that was a, a big plus especially on a day like that finally after kinda of sitting there for a few minutes um, I shut it off and I went in to the shop and I told them that I was actually maybe gonna change my mind on this boardage I wanted to take the Alero out for a test drive so uh, he gave me a plate to slap on the back of the car and I went for a ride around, you know, like a 10 minute drive around town, and I just remember the first time driving the Solero, I was thinking, this is the car. This is the one that I have to have. <laughs> um, because it drove exactly like a Grand Am does, and it was just very responsive, and it was quick, and it was just fun. That, that car was just very fun to drive. Um, one of the most fun cars that I'd ever had. So, uh, you know, I drove it back and I told them this is the one that I want. So, uh, had to wait a couple of days to figure out the financial side of it, um, how to really come up with the money and such. Um, the guy offered to take my Bonneville in on trade and he gave me a really really good deal uh, right after the trade of the Bonneville so it cut the price of the Alero down more than half and that made it a lot easier to actually get into so it was actually because um, I, I do still have the records and I've been wrong for a while I actually thought I bought the car at the end of July of 05 I actually bought it uh, on the 19th I believe um... Yes, July 19th, 2005. So before I start talking about my Alero in particular, let's just uh, kind of recap on the background of the Alero because it was actually a really good car, but unfortunately it was short-lived. So the Alero was actually um, debuted for the 1999 model year. Uh, so 99 was the first year. I had one of the first ones. Uh, mine was actually built in November of uh, 98, so I'm pretty sure that, you know, I had one of the earliest Aleros uh, out there at that time. It shared the same platform as the Pontiac Grand Am. It was more so Oldsmobile trying to get in with a younger crowd. Uh, they were trying to attract younger buyers at this time. Um, you know, when you think of Oldsmobile, you don't necessarily think of you know, a hipster type vehicle or something. Um, uh, Oldsmobile had a really, they had really awesome cars uh, in the, you know, mid to late 90s. Um, especially cars like the Intrigue, which is 
basically a bigger version of the Alero. Um, a lot of the styling characteristics of the Alero came from the Intrigue. If you actually looked at them side by side, the Alero looks like a little Intrigue mini-me. But needless to say, um, you know, younger buyers just weren't, um, you know, buying Oldsmobiles and the Alero was kind of Oldsmobile's call to the younger people. Um, they wanted to have a car that was sporty and they wanted to have a car that was quick and had that fun to drive feeling, uh, much like a Pontiac Grand Am would, which younger buyers were probably getting more so than any other Oldsmobile at that time. The Alero that I had was a GL trim level, which was one out of three trims that were available for 99. There was the GX, which was more so like the base trim. The GL was the mid trim. And then there was a GLS, which was the top of the line trim. So the GL was kind of in the middle. And um, the GL kind of allowed you to have options uh, like the, um, the 3.4 liter V6, which was optional. It allowed you to have like an optional uh, leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, it gave you standard equipment uh, like power windows, uh, allowed you to have optional remote keyless entry. So the GL was uh, actually a, a pretty nice package without going over the top um, with all of the Alero trim levers, levels that were available. Um, a 2000 model year actually introduced a couple of other trim levels. They kind of started splitting trim levels up. So instead of just a GL, there was like a GL1, a GL2, uh, there might have been a GL3. And throughout the lifespans of this car, since there really wasn't a whole lot of time for the Alero to evolve that much, I mean, there really weren't a whole lot of changes ever made to the Alero. Um, the styling pretty much had stayed the same throughout its entire lifespan. Uh, the interior really didn't change at all. Um, there might have been a couple of like different furnishings here and there that they may have changed, uh, but nothing really changed throughout the lifespan of the Alero at all. I do know one thing on the outside is a lot of the um, 99 and 2000 Aleros, if you look on the trunk, a lot of times the name Alero is in a really small badge, really small badge that sits uh, closer to the right tail light on the trunk, trunk lid. Um, so it's a really small badge, but um, one way to tell if it's anything 2001 and older, the Oldsmobile name is much larger, and it sits in the same spot, but it's a lot bigger. So uh, the earlier models had a smaller Oldsmobile name, whereas the later ones had them larger. Interesting fact. Um, the standard engine was a 2.4 liter uh, twin cam four cylinder, which was the same power plant used on a lot of the base Grand Ams also. Um, then, like I said, you had the optional 3.4 liter 3400 uh, V6 um, that was also used in the Grand Am uh, as an optional engine. Um, but then in, I think, 2002, um, the four-cylinder, the twin cam kind of became uh, defunct. <laughs> and um, they started putting the 2.2 liter Ecotec engines uh, into it as the standard power plant. Um, so that became the new four cylinder once the twin cam, uh, the 2.4 liter twin cam was phased out. So I had finally gotten my new car and I had never been <laughs> so happy with, with anything that I had driven uh, up until you know that point. Um, the Alero was just, uh, it was an amazing car, um, and the, ama the Alero proved to be an amazing car in the many years to come. So the Alero, when we bought it, had 117,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, so it was already five years old, and it had a high, mile, high mileage on it. Um, it came from Pennsylvania, um, I, so I'm not exactly sure what the history on the car was, if... Um, I'm pretty sure it might have been a fleet vehicle with the amount of mileage that was on this car. Um, 117,000 miles was a lot. Um, when I bought the car, the um, mechanic did say that it started to develop a head gasket leak, which was very common on those 3.4 liter engines. And this 
is probably the first time that I had ever heard about that issue. So this is when it became knowledge to me about how these um, gaskets on these 3.1s, the 3.4s, and the 3800 uh, motors, how they just kind of go because of that uh, coolant that they put in there, the Dex cool. So the um, one thing he told me to make sure was done was that I have the, you know, I have those gaskets replaced immediately. So I definitely had that on my list, and at the time, um, I had um, recently uh, was getting ready to start a new job, um, and a guy who worked at this job, who I was kind of getting to know, happened to to work on cars on the side. So he offered to, you know, fix these gaskets for like a couple hundred dollars, which was a lot cheaper than a lot of places that actually do that work for way more. A couple months into having the car, uh, once I was working and stuff, I started to, you know, try to save my paychecks and everything, put it toward this, and I think by by the end of 2005, um, I had the gaskets repaired uh, for the first time. <laughs> and I'll get into this a little bit later. Um, so I took care of that problem and we were good to go. Now the one issue that I had with the car, um, I had the car, I want to say for two weeks maybe, two or, two or three weeks. Um, I was driving the car one night and um, I started noticing uh, some steam coming up from under the hood and um, happened to look down and the temperature gauge was rising above normal so immediately I pulled into a gas station parking lot um, opened up the hood and there was just all this steam everywhere and I was so upset I was thinking the radiator had probably gone out or such so I was just very upset I'd had the car for three weeks and I was like this car is done already <laughs> um, but it turned out to be the water pump. Uh, the water pump exploded. And here's a fun fact. Uh, the gas station had a payphone, so I had to use a payphone <laughs> to call uh, somebody to, um, you know, come help me. Um, and that was, that was fun. So, payphones. I didn't have a cell phone yet. I had a payphone. Okay, I had, a, I had a cell phone, but it was like a prepaid cell phone where, like, if you, if you make a, a phone call, you, like, lose... <laughs> minutes rapidly so I saved everything for text messages um, so I'd use the payphone to call now up until after we got the water pump replaced and after the gaskets were replaced that Alero there's the train that Alero ran like a top for ever um, I don't remember having any other problems with this car the entire time that I had had it. Um, I seriously just can't rem remember if I had anything else go wrong with it. The transmission was strong, the engine was strong now that it was it was fixed, um, and yeah, I just, I, I cannot think of anything that needs to, that needed to be fixed after that. Uh, in 2006, uh, I was rear-ended in this car. <laughs> Some guy was behind me. He was looking at something on the floor, or trying to reach for something on the floor. Um, so uh, I stopped at a red light, and he bumped into the back of us and um, kind of scuffed his car up a little bit, but he didn't do anything to the Alero at all. Um, I took a look. There was not any mark, like any sign of there being any damage. Um, the only thing that really happened was when I opened up the trunk, uh, the, the little push pins that held the, the bumper guard on, the plastic bumper guard, you know, um, just kind of popped out. So I put them back in place and everything is fine. So, I mean, he was, uh, he felt really bad and nobody was hurt. There was no damage done to my car at least. And, um, you know, I told him and I said, you know, it's, you know, everything seems to be okay. There's, there's really no need to, you know, um, you know, call the cops or anything to, to get them involved, it's, it's cool, we're, we were fine, nothing happened, um, so that was, that was really that, um, 
Nothing else there. Haha! -ha! We're going on a joy ride. Joy ride. Joy ride. Joy ride. Joy ride. <laughs> That's my order. Can I get your order, please? He's talking. Yes, I would like, um... Oh, sorry. Oh, I think everyone at home wants a fry. Yeah, yeah. I'm even watching this. Um, let's go. You know, you know we're living in 2005. If you don't stay in touch with your friends because they don't have a computer, that's pretty sad. Or or if car going. Or if you uh, switch around the house for the remote because you want to turn on the TV uh, rather than just pushing a button. It's pretty sad. Do you know anybody who's home that you know? Uh, no. Like is Cork home or something? I don't know. Maybe. Just just barging with the camera. Okay. The dice. There it is. Yep. You were so crazy. No, that's the truth. The fight was going. There was a fight there. Unless the dots are starting to fall off. Hey. Turn that off, it'll kill better. Kill better. It's Mike's old car. Well, it was a good car. So I drove the Alero for uh, maybe a year and a half, uh, maybe a little longer than that, almost two years maybe. Um, and then my brother, uh, my younger brother needed a car, was going to need a car because um, we had a 96 Lumina, Chevy Lumina, which I may talk about in another vlog. Um, I don't really have any videos or anything of that but I could probably give you guys a short story on that one um, well it had the 3.1 liter engine and this this gasket blew the gaskets blew a long time ago so this car was actually running on a blown gasket and it made it for a long time on a blown gasket um, but it was just getting ridiculous it was gonna go at any time so um, you know I, I kinda offered him to take the Alero if, if I, you know, ended up getting another car. Um, as much as I really didn't want to give up the Alero, I, at that time, was getting kind of tired of driving it, to be honest with you. I don't think it was because of the fact that it was the Alero. Like, as much as I loved driving it, this is kind of when I wanted something bigger. Like, I was, I started looking at a couple of, you know, SUVs and stuff. I started looking at, like, the Chevy Equinoxes and the torrents and all, all that stuff but this is around the time that I ended up finding my 2003 Pontiac Aztec um, so once I finalized um, the deal with the Aztec and such we got rid of the Illumina and then I handed the Alero down to my brother Kevin that was the end of my story of the Alero and Kevin ended up driving the Alero for a long time but I mean obviously the car is getting older at this point and more problems are really starting to come out of the Alero the older that it gets. Um, I don't remember all of the problems that we had with it but I do remember that uh, this was in it was around Christmas of 2009 um, this car ended up with a, a locked engine that it completely blew the engine blew and you're probably wondering well how did that happen well I'll tell you what happened so remember I told you years prior I put gaskets I ha had somebody put gaskets into the car they replaced the the upper intake and had gaskets and such he offered to you know 
fix these gaskets for like a couple hundred dollars. Um, well, it turns out when they put this uh, engine back together, they did not torque down these bolts <laughs> properly. Uh, nothing was torqued down to spec, and what happened was this car was still leaking coolant, just very slowly. Um, so, you know, finally years and years and years of coolant buildup was finally taking place, and I didn't know about this until when I had the uh, Aztecs gaskets replaced. Uh, this guy had done our, my, the gaskets on the Aztec too. So I found out a year, this was in 2008, I found out that the gaskets were leaking again. You know, I had to have my real mechanic, who I finally, I finally found a real mechanic. Um, you know, he took care of that, and then shortly after, you know, I found out that the Alero was leaking too, so it was probably leaking this whole time. And we had that one replaced again, all those gaskets on the Alero were replaced. And that engine, you know, I think the damage had already been done, so um, it finally just got to the point where um, it ended up uh, it ended up getting ruined. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. I now have to try and start it because we are going to attempt to actually drive it about five minutes away to where the motor, new motor is going to be put in. So let's see what happens. Uh, this is not going to sound pretty, folks, because it's to the point where it's pretty much all seized. I'll be surprised if we can get it running, but I think the battery's probably dead, so it might need a jump. Same exact motor that's in the Aztec 3.4 liter V6. See, if you look down there, you see what was all grimy. Yeah, the gasket right along the side. See, the new gasket was put on last summer, like I said, but that's the residue that came from the old gasket down there. So. It's a lot easier, like I said, to see on this car than it is on the uh, Aztec. It's so condensed under there. So the Alero was already down one engine, uh, so the you know the engine was um, replaced, and then my brother continued to drive it for a little while longer. And again, you know problems here and there. Um, at this point, some of the speakers had were were stopped, <laughs> not working in the car anymore. Um, just you know the paint on the front bumper was really starting to come off. Uh, more rust was showing up on the hood and in in various places but needless to say um, he continued to drive this car and then there came a night um, I want to say maybe in 2013 roughly um, there came a night where my brother was driving uh, the car and he was actually 
on the highway and all of a sudden it overheated on the highway. Parked the car on the highway and he called me out there so I had to drive out to to get him. It was <laughs> he was actually pretty far. It was almost like 45 minute drive to get out there. So what had happened was something on the radiator had finally blown out and all of the coolant obviously leaked out so being on the highway and such the engine overheated pretty good. Um, I brought some water with me in a, a milk jug so we had to continuously fill up the coolant bottle with water to cool it down and then we would drive so far <laughs> uh, and then you know he would pull over again when it started getting hot so we put more water in it and it was a very tedious process the entire drive home um, but pretty much you know once we got it home uh, the following day you know went and started it up and it was just pa 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 like that engine had already been smoked um, so it toasted those gaskets and everything uh, the the engine was smoking really bad out the tailpipe so we knew that I knew that that one was done for um, so that's kind of when my brother was he kind of had it and he started looking at cars and found the G6 that he has now and at that time my brother Tyler who had his license finally wanted you know he needed a car so my brother kind of made him a deal you know if you want to pay for a replacement engine for the Alero then you know it's all yours so um, you know, Tyler came up with the money to put into the Alero, and that became his car for, well, up until almost two years ago. Um, and then when he had it, that's probably when most of the problems just got way worse. Um, I mean, we had to deal with the um, struts, the, the spring um, on the driver's side went bad. Both sides were actually bad, so the front strut springs had to be replaced. Um, and just a lot of other things here and there that, you know, the, the body was actually starting to fall apart, like moldings were coming apart. Um, and then you had your door, the fuel door came off. And it was obviously just time for this car to, you know, to go. I mean, the last straw for Tyler <laughs> was when the starter started going. and for a while he couldn't get it to start like the starter had completely locked up and he was driving my mom's car so I tried to show him a little trick but you can only do the trick if you have two people it's been a couple of days and my car's still not working but um Mike brought this up from the basement and I guess it's gonna hopefully show me a trick to try to get it started temporarily yeah the trick uh, is to knock on the starter oh, with, where's the uh, starter though you see under here where the exhaust is Ah, it's a tight spot, like I said, it's down over in here. Oh, no, I can't. So right, right there is where the starter is. So that's what I have to do? Yep, just kind of bang on it. Now try and get in and see if it unlocks it. Oh, gosh. Okay, here we go. Like I said, I, I hope this was strong enough. You might need to find it. Yep. <laughs> in my other hand. Nothing. Nothing. This is weird. <laughs> nope. Oh, my broken Swiffer thing. <laughs> Are you still walking? It came off. Well, there's that. Now Mike has a, a stick, more like a branch. Oh, jeez. Nope. <laughs> what? What? It's magic. Bravo. Well, for now I have a starting car. It's not going to last though, is it? It's going to be a hit or miss every time. Ah. Just like it has been. So, you know, then in September of 2015 when I decided that, you know, I I wanted to finally go back to an SUV after having the Grand Prix all these years, I found my escape. I offered Tyler to buy the Grand Prix off of me for what I owed on it, which was really nothing at that point. And um, we decided to junk the Alero.
So I really didn't get to film this the day that we ended up getting the new cars because that day was so crazy. But this is the where the Alero is uh, now sitting. So they've already got her marked for scrap. And uh, yeah, they're just going to go ahead and get rid of it. So. Yep, this is where she's going to stay, so again, you were a wonderful car, and we will definitely miss you. Hopefully your parts, the parts that are still good anyway, will go to somebody else's Alaro, and pieces of you will live on. Farewell, friend. So according to this thing that I found online, this little cheap vehicle history thing that I found, um, if I put in the VIN number for the Alero, um, it does come up that it was scrapped on October 2nd of 2015. It's just amazing to think that it went from 117000 to 194000 In 10 years we've had it. It went through, it had three engines. <laughs> um, but the transmission was still the same, and we didn't do anything to the transmission. Never had a fluid change, never had a filter change, like, because, I mean, at the time, you know, I didn't think about it. I don't know if it has ever been done, but the whole time that we had it, we never did anything with the transmission. It's amazing to think that that transmission, which those transmissions are really known for not lasting a long time, um, they do develop problems over time, uh, but 194,000 miles with original fluid and such, to our knowledge, I mean, that's amazing. The transmission was like the only original piece in the car that had all that mileage on it. I would like to think that people who drive Aleros might, may understand where I'm coming from. Um, you know, they're fun. They were fun. They were comfortable. They were quick. If you had the V6, it was quick. I don't know if the four cylinders were that quick, but the V6 was nice. It was quick. Um, it was just a really good car, and I do miss it. Um, my brothers, both of my brothers liked it. Um, I know Tyler misses it. <laughs> um, but it was time, and like I said, it's helping other people out, hopefully. So what do I have left over of the Alero, um, you know, since we had gotten rid of it. Well, you guys already know that I have the the owner's manual, of course, with the portfolio. This, like I said, was the original um, bill of sale right here. Um, so, like I said, Ju July 19th, uh, 2005. Um, traded in the Pontiac Bonneville, which is also listed on here. The Bonneville had 152,000 miles on it. The odometer reading on the Alero when we bought it was 117,859 miles. Um, so there was that. I also still have uh, one of the registration forms for the license plates from 2000 and, oh, 2006. So that's the 2006 one there. I got some receipts. Um, let's see, um, I had, uh, oh, the oil change. I had somebody do the oil change at 135,000 miles at a place that is actually not open anymore. Uh, let's see, this is a receipt for, oh, yes, yes, I forgot about this. Um, when I had the car, there was a water leak um, in, when is this? This was June 20th, 2006. Um, car had 100 and almost 120,000 miles on it and there was water leaking um, on the floor and it was coming from the um, the cowl underneath the the windshield uh, there was a piece of molding there um, and water was getting into it so that was actually a pretty common issue I, f I forgot all about that um, happened with the, the Grand Ams also um, basically water was getting into the cowl where the uh, blower motor was underneath the windshield wiper you know plastic thing and they, they didn't seal it right so um, what ended up happening was the uh, water would get in there and if you don't catch it in time uh, you know not only does water show up on the floor like mine was but you also have the problem of blowing out the um, 
the resistor for the fan blower motor. So at some point, that did happen to this Alero, um, even after I had had the seal replaced. Um, but at some point, um, you know, later on in this car's life, the fan speeds only worked on high, didn't work on any of the lows. So it was like speeds four and five only worked, I think. Um, so let's see, what's this? This is a receipt for brake pads. So I had brakes done, uh, let's see, April 14th, 2006. This is another oil change. Uh, this is at 124,000 miles. Uh, went to go Valvoline and paid a lot of money to have things done. Oh, I had an air filter done, that's why. So we did the air filter and an oil change. So. 124,000 miles was that one. And the last thing I have in here are receipts for four new tires. And I had the tires done at 129,000 miles. So I had put new tires on the car then. So those are all of those records there. In the top of this portfolio, there is a couple of additional literature from Oldsmobile. There is the 1999 Oldsmobile Quick, Quick Reference Guide, um, which just kind of shows you uh, colored pictures and brief information about uh, things, you know, in the car, um, you know, like your gauges, your audio system, picture of the engine under that. Yeah, there's a couple pictures of both engines, actually. So there's that. There's the 1999 warranty and owner assistance information. Uh, which I never read. Uh, the original owners of the vehicle didn't write anything, so I have no idea uh, when the car was first purchased or delivered, I should say. Um, the Oldsmobile owner care, which looks like 90s. This, this says 90s all over it. I mean, the font, the pictures, um, you know, I mean, it, it just it looks like a literature from the 90s for sure. And of course, last but not least, tucked into the portfolio is the 1999 Alero Owner's Manual itself. Um, this actually has the stock number from the original dealership. Um, this is the manual. There's really no colored pictures at this point in time because GM did not have any of their, their colored pictures anymore. So all of this, and that's pretty much it. And aside from the manual, um, the other thing that I have that belonged to the Alero um, is one of the keys and uh, keyless entry remotes, which basically have no more buttons on them. <laughs> it's so worn. But I wanted to keep this one because I know for a fact that this is the remote uh, and the key that I used to use myself because... I remember at work I had to paint something one time and it was oil based paint and inside the crevice of the Alero symbol, I don't know if you can see it, probably not, maybe a little bit, but there is a speck of red that ended up in there because I ended up getting red on not only on this key but I ended up getting it a little bit on the inside of the car um, so there was a red thing there so I knew um, that this remote in this key, these were the ones that I would use uh, myself. So the other key went to the dealership um, and I took this one to keep. If you did like this vlog, don't forget to actually like, comment, and subscribe down below. And also check out Mike's Vehicle Spotlight, which is my official vehicle touring segment that I post right here on this channel. Alright guys, once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.